flash flash boom boom there's gonna be a lot of thunderstorms going on from texas to the mid-atlantic as we head into the week ahead rainfall rates are going to be on the high end and we're going to see some flooding come as a result there's also cooler than average air for a lot of the country but that will eventually change i've got the details on the entire pattern ahead with custom graphics right here One nation weather. These maps are awesome, and they show you exactly where that heaviest rain is going to add up as we go through the week ahead. You can get many more model maps just like these if you check out the link in the description to Weatherbell. They give you a free trial right down there at two maps just like the ones I use in my videos. Also, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing to the channel if you want more consistent, accurate, and educational updates from me in the future. Also, turn on those notifications by hitting that bell icon. Thank you so much to all of you who have already done that. Let's get right into today's forecast. Looking at the week ahead from Sunday all the way to Friday, we're going to break down where the showers and thunderstorms are going to be. And let's get right into that with our Sunday, looking at our 5 to 8 p.m. time frame. That's when the best chance for afternoon showers and thunderstorms normally comes on up. And in this area right here, from parts of the Carolinas and Virginia, back down through Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, showers and thunderstorms are basically going to be a daily thing. The closer you go to the coast, the better chance you're going to have of some of those showers and thunderstorms day by day. But even inland areas there in Alabama and Georgia, the Carolinas, really look like they're going to have a good shot at rainfall. Also on our Sunday here, going towards the back end of the weekend, looking to be outside. It's going to be pretty iffy for a lot of areas from the southern plains all the way to the northern plains, particularly there in parts of the Dakotas and Minnesota, as well as there um, coming out of the Rockies there in parts of Colorado, as well as into northern New Mexico. Let's jump ahead to our Monday. Not much changes in the pattern. A lot of rainfall in the southeast, a lot of rainfall going on in some parts of the upper Midwest, but look at one area where we're going to be a little bit drier. Just wanted to point this out. If you live in from northern Texas all the way in up there to around northern Indiana, southern Michigan, generally rain chances are going to be lower as we start the week. Even as we go towards the midweek time frame, the shower and thunderstorm chances aren't going to be quite as high as they will be elsewhere. You can kind of see that area remaining in the whites, indicating less chances for rain. Still be on that lookout for some scattered showers and storms at times, but this is that main area where we're really going to have to watch, and that's why I've circled it again from southern Texas all the way over there to North Carolina. This model indicating with those deeper greens that we have the more scattered to numerous coverage of those showers and thunderstorms Tuesday afternoon. Notice this is Tuesday afternoon. We'll see more even as the week goes on, and that will cause those flooding concerns. Also Tuesday, parts of Wisconsin, the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, as well as on over there towards Maine, and back down to the New York City area, we'll be watching some of the heavy rainfall pockets in those locations. Notice Michigan, though, in that area getting a little bit skipped then. We'll see a better chance of rain in places like Michigan going towards Wednesday. In fact, a lot of the Ohio Valley, the Midwest, the Southeast, and the South Central having a scattered chance for some afternoon showers and thunderstorms. Wednesday, we'll see some even lingering into the nighttime day by day this week because of how high the humidity is going to be. In fact, let's take a look at all that moisture. Look at how it's just going to continue building up for a lot of the country. Notice this orange is pushing even further north. That's what will help everybody in the eastern half of the United States get rain at some point over the course of the next few days, even if it's not with where we'll have our flooding chances. In fact, let's speak of those flooding chances and look at the 24-hour precipitation timetables here. This is as we go out of Sunday through the midway point of Monday. So Sunday, Sunday night, early Monday, this is where the best chance for the heavy rainfall is going to be. And this is exactly where I was showing you. It's going to be really all week long from Virginia, the Carolinas, curling all the way on over there towards parts of eastern New Mexico, areas in between. If you're in that circle right there, be watching out for some of those locally higher thunderstorms totals that could produce two to four inches of rain, maybe even a little bit more. That will certainly cause isolated scattered bouts of flooding going out of Sunday into Monday. Now, as we go from late Monday around the 7 to 8 p.m. time frame to Tuesday around the 7 to 8 p.m. time frame, there's a few areas that stick out to me on this graphic. Number one, I do want to point out up here, if you live in parts of the mid-Atlantic and the northeast, some of that moisture that's been really stuck in the south with a lingering front over the course of the last several days, that's going to begin making its way to the north, heading out of Monday into Tuesday. Therefore, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, parts of New York, Let's see, Connecticut, Rhode Island, all the way in up there to Vermont. We'll be watching some of the heavy rainfall, isolated flooding there. By the way, this area I just circled down here, Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas. You'll also have probably a more scattered end flooding threat to Monday going into early Tuesday, as well as through a lot of the day Tuesday. Also, Minnesota, Wisconsin, some rainfall up there. That probably won't be enough for some flooding, but maybe an isolated bout if it couldn't be ruled out, and that's why I showed it to you. Here we go through a lot of the day Wednesday, and this is that day where we're going to have a lot more of that broad chance of rainfall. This goes from Tuesday 7 p.m. and through all of Wednesday to around 7 to 8 p.m. So this is mostly that Wednesday rainfall. Notice the heaviest rainfall on the south and east, so that's why the flooding threats will be higher there. But even on up there, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio will get some rain, if not Wednesday, then probably into Wednesday night. 
If you have any local questions for how much rain you could see, make sure you're dropping them down there in the comments section below. Any other questions you have, comments, whatever, put those down there. I always love to read them and reply. But let's look at some of the local area rain totals. Maybe this will help you out if you live in Raleigh, North Carolina, or Columbia, South Carolina from Sunday to Thursday, from the beginning of Sunday to the end of Thursday. This is how much rain you could see. Looking like about two to four inches, according to the Weather Prediction Center, with the heaviest rainfall around that midweek time frame. Same goes in Jackson, Mississippi. Wednesday, the heaviest rainfall looking likely for you two to four inches of rainfall. Texas is going to have some of those locally highest amounts, three to six inches. We could see even more in some of the heaviest thunderstorms. It looks like Tuesday into Wednesday from Austin to Houston. That's when you'll be watching some of those downpours. Memphis, you are really on that northern edge of this rainfall, so only half an inch to an inch is expected. But again, all it takes in any of these spots is a heavier thunderstorm to dump way more than what is expected. So be on the lookout for that. This is all being triggered by this little upper level piece of energy you see forming up and then fizzling down. That's going to help support an older front. I talked about that more in my last video. Of course, we've also got the cooler than average air for a lot of the country and as we take a look at those temperature anomalies that we're going to have coming out of our Sunday going towards our Monday the 22nd look at those blues you see right on down here from parts of New Mexico and Colorado all the way and down there to Arkansas and Louisiana looking like the area where we're going to have those temperatures around 5 to 15 degrees below average especially thanks to those thunderstorms as we kick off the week ahead will also not be below average that's for sure for a lot of the rest of the country especially if you live in the northwest where it'll be much warmer than at normal for this time of the year as we go out of the 23rd on Tuesday into the 24th on Wednesday, cooler than average air down here in parts of Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Louisiana. In fact, a lot of the Midwest, Southeast, and Ohio Valley will be looking at warmer than average air in the West as ridging continues to develop there. That will eventually shift east, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in about the 10-minute mark here of the video. Let's go on over to the daily temperatures from Sunday to Wednesday, though. I want to cover the next four days in detail with where you're going to see those coolest and warmest temperatures. It's really pretty mild as we go towards our Sunday morning lows. This is what we're looking at starting the day 6, 7, 8 o'clock in the morning from parts of Nebraska and North Dakota and South Dakota all the way over there to Maine, looking at low to mid 60s, as well as even some upper 50s getting sprinkled in the mix, especially as you go closer to that Canadian border. Meanwhile, back on out here in the far western U.S. Sunday morning, those circles indicate record maximum lows. So in other words, the low temperatures for the day have never been so high and since records have been kept. So keep that in mind. It's going to be very toasty, not only in the morning, but in the afternoon there as well in the West Coast. Let's flip back over to some of those areas that have the 50s and 60s in the morning, though. Look at this by the afternoon, Nebraska, Kansas, all the way up there to the upper peninsula of Michigan, looking at some 70s and across the board, some low 80s also trying to get sprinkled in the mix there in places like Illinois. And then back towards the west, look at the contrast from northeast to southwestern United States. Crazy there, it goes from 70s to being well into the triple digits. In Las Vegas, we could break a record high with temperatures well into the 110 to 115 degree range. Down here, this is pretty seasonable. But even in some parts of Oklahoma, Arkansas, Texas, this is where we're really going to begin to feel those thunderstorms keep us even below average into the 80s rather than the 90s in some locations. Monday afternoon, let's look at you. I skipped over Monday morning because it's very similar to Sunday morning. By the afternoon, lots more 80s here in the South Central United States, even parts of the Midwest. These are pretty seasonable to below seasonable temperatures, and that's exactly why I just showed you those blues on those temperature anomaly graphics. Savor this because it's coming with some much-needed rain for many locations as well except we will have those flooding concerns, of course, so make sure you're staying tuned for the latest updates on that. Tuesday morning, 50s to 60s to 70s in the eastern half of the United States from the Canadian border down to the Gulf Coast. That's definitely going to be the story with that. And then as we go towards Tuesday afternoon, look at these temperatures, uh, a nice swath there of those 80s. In fact, you see that little circle there in Arkansas. We've also got one out of the area I just circled there towards parts of central Texas, those 80s are actually so far below average that they're record minimum highs. I know there's been a lot of weird terminology thrown around. That is a high that is so low that it's never been seen be that cool for a high temperature in the day before. Yeah, that's hard to digest, right? Back over here towards the western United States, Tuesday afternoon, still looking toasty. Going towards Wednesday afternoon as well here, we're going to see a lot of that heat spreading out of California, Nevada, Arizona, even moving towards some parts of the central plains. Look at that, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas. Now it's starting to return to the 90s while we see a final shot of some northwesterly flow here, I believe, in parts of the eastern U.S. Lots of 70s and 80s to go around to finish off the upcoming week. But look at what's going to be on the way once this cooler air begins to retreat it's going to start pushing east. You see the cool air. All right, Thursday going to Friday, moving towards the east coast. But look at those reds that are going to take them over. 
Yeah, those cooler than average temperatures can't last forever. And let's take a look at how that plays out from the 25th on our Thursday to the 26th on our Friday. Cooler than average for a lot of the country there in the east, but in the northwest, coming out of the northwest and into parts of the mountain west, that's where temperatures are going to be around 5 to 10 to 15 degrees above seasonable averages. That is as we close out the work week and then as we head into the upcoming weekend. So seven to eight days out from when I'm filming this video. This is late Saturday evening as I film this, the 20th. By the time we go to Saturday, the 27th, Sunday to 28th. Look at that warmth. Nebraska, the Dakotas, Minnesota looking to be at least 10 degrees above normal for this time of the year by that time frame. A little cooler than average still with lingering front down there in the southeast. Probably still some thunderstorm chances. The far west coast a little bit cooler than average, but most areas really starting to warm on up. And with warmer conditions, this is when we might start to see severe weather return for the north central U.S., which is pretty typical this time of the year. It just really hasn't been able to get going over the course of the last few days and isn't expected to get going much of this week in more than isolated fashion for most of the country just because of how cool it is. Once that warmth returns, Nebraska, the Dakotas, Minnesota, you see these grays and greens. That indicates some low pressure bring in an increased chance on these ensemble members that are averaged out for heavy rainfall, for thunderstorms, when you're 5 to 10 to 15 degrees above normal for this time of the year, you could certainly see some severe weather out of that. So Sunday night going into Monday, that could be maybe an event up there in that area. It's too early to tell, and I'll keep you posted for sure, though. Here we go towards Tuesday, heading into early Wednesday. That's what 00Z means for Wednesday. That is late in the afternoon and into the evening. Tuesday is actually what that represents there on the time on the left side that I was just showing you. These grays indicate low certainty, but a general area where we could see some thunderstorms. Again, if we place that over some warmth, it could certainly come with some severe weather. And that's why I'm here to give you those consistent, accurate, and educational forecasts. Again, just that simple request, please hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. It really helps me out right here at the channel. Leave all comments, questions, and concerns down in that comments section down below the video. I'll be back Monday the 22nd or Tuesday the 23rd, so a couple days from now with my next video. Stay safe out there. One Nation Weather.